together. We're together. One mic, one podcast. I mean, right? So we are, believe it or not, at episode number 10. And so let's do a little bit of a recap. What's that? But you can see your paper. Blocking myself. <laughs> Where we're at. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, Lana, I've seen more recently, but Rebecca, wow, a blast from the I mean, past. isn't it funny? Yeah. I personally am not a sweet person. Some people just like to say I'm bitter, but I. <laughs> <laughs> You're I like salty, boo. I'm salty. I'm a truth teller. I don't lie. She likes the oh, balls that's a in good her face. One. I don't have that one. <laughs> Lana, be nice. Is it possible to have the best orgasm ever? In middle age? Oh, I, I'm without words. Of course <laughs> yes. it is. It is. It, it. So of the episodes we've done and of the people we've talked to, which ones kind of run true to you? What do you, what have you implemented? Well, Where are you at? I mean, I, I honestly can't believe we've already done this many episodes. It just seems like they, you know, they've gone by, but um, I mean, I love all of them. We're all our babies. Yeah. But um, I mean, I did really have fun. Uh, I guess most people have fun. Talking about sex. Of course you do. Um, so Lori, this is so great. Welcome. Thank you for coming to talk to us all about sex. Um, so can we call you a sex expert? Yes, you can. Yay! I, okay. I wear that title proudly. Oh, so yes, excellent. please do. <laughs> but no, she, she offered some really yep. like good insights because it, everything changes as you get, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and also that concept of mindfulness, like, which is something I'd, I'd never thought of, but, you know, especially as we age, and also as women, you're always thinking about all the other stuff that has to, the kids need this, and did I go to the grocery store, and well, maybe, you know, just, you have to kind of let all that go. It's not like in our 20s when you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm good, let's hit it. <laughs> yeah, and I've never looked at raisins the same way since. You sort of say to yourself, how is looking at a raisin going to help my <laughs> orgasms, people? <laughs> Bear with me. She told us all about Making love to the raisins. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I, I didn't have a bottom either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? <laughs> okay. So for me, well, you're, yeah. Maybe on your birthday, I'll give you a bunch of raisins. A bunch of raisins. Um, okay. So for me, this is funny. It's funny that you choose sex and I am going to go right to end of life plan. So Meredith, you mentioned that the Swedish death plan is one way to go about it, which I hadn't heard of. It's all about being mindful and conscious of who you're leaving behind so that they're not left with an absolute disaster. So for, for me, end of life planning was super useful. It's something that I've wanted to figure out. I'm not telling everybody that I've got it 110% figured out, obviously, but I did make a call. Um, I have an attorney who's putting stuff oh, together for me. Okay. You know, I have a son who's got some special needs. So part of my end of life planning is it's a little bit more complicated in that we have to sort of figure out how to, you know, make sure that he's taken care of um, and that also he doesn't, you know, something happens to me that he doesn't just sort of go off the deep end and, you know, blow his $50 that I leave him in my will. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, that's great. You like actually started on a plan. Like you listen to what Meredith has to say mm -hmm. and try to get it together. I have yet to do that. So I'm taking inspiration from you and right? I'm going to be proactive. On that. Oh, you know? I also made, I also made a playlist. This song We had talked about that, the and then I got yeah. scared. I was thinking, I love music. Oh my goodness, I do not want bad music. Well, something you, happens to me. Well, you have to give me a guest list so I can make sure that I get the security, so that anybody that you don't want is let pass that red right? Because it's going to be the party of the year. All right, um, <laughs> we're yeah. back. We love you. We don't want you to go. No, I'm here for a while. Um, just uh, um, but with that said, you know, just talking about like going to a party, yeah, different kind of party. What are you going to wear? So I did enjoy talking to Susie. <laughs> was well, that not a great segue? I was going to say, watch well, a segue. Susie Shackman. And Lana, I will never forget you coming in in your Havergal <laughs> uniform to my office for your go I was like 17. I, I mean, it's imprinted. It's imprinted in my brain. So I do like talking to Susie about fashion. One of the things I really love that she said was to use it as a tool for empowerment. People always think about it as frivolous and what you're wearing and why you're so concerned and you shouldn't be concerned with that. 
outward appearance, but sure. it's very true what she said about how you present yourself outwardly to the world, you know, has a big effect on your confidence and how, how you then present yourself. For me, that, that was true, but the extension of it is, oh, now in my 50s, I don't give up. I, I'm thrilled for body positivity, don't get me wrong, but I think it's gone a little too far. Interesting. So, I mean, I don't want to see your butt. I don't. I don't want to see your <laughs> vagina either. So, pull them down. <laughs> Just um, pull them out of there. Also, shop your closet. The shop your closet. Yes. Super, super sustainability. sustainability. Right. So, honestly, stand in front of your closet. Try your clothes on. I shop my closet all the time. I very rarely buy things anymore. Mm. So I used to shop my mother's closet. Yeah. My daughter loves to shop my closet. Well, why am I not shopping my own closet? And we can, I can shop your closet. Recycle, upcycle, right? Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. it's, it's a cycle. Like, keep it all going. My segue is going to go from sharing closets with Lana Ogilvy to friends and soul crew. So Angela Perzo came on. I have always adored Angela. I think she is just such a force of nature. Angela is a certified wild woman. You have no idea what's happening here. It's this... How much snow is coming down? Oh, nice. So we just broke through the clouds, and guess what's up here? Beautiful, beautiful sunshine. See you guys. We're going skiing. It's such a cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. You only are here once, and what's really important is friends. The connection with my friends, I call them like my gatekeepers. They've known me forever. Mm -hmm. So I always know that if I ever go off the rails one day or if something's nice. happening, I have friends who know me from way back. My, my friends are like, that's my whole life, you know? So for me to, some, some people don't speak to their friends anymore because they don't look the same way and they're afraid to like go out there and show themselves, you know, at 55 years old. And then most women kind of retreat. Since we did that episode with her, I feel like I turn around every week and there's more research there's more information about why friendship and community is so important as we age. And just building that up in your 50s and your 60s is, you know, those, you need that. You need yeah. your soul crew. You need to have the friends. You need that. You know, you're going to need those people, your walks. I absolutely agree. And I mean, she's just someone who's super authentic. I mean, yeah. I used to work with her all the time when we were much younger. Um, and I did love that, like, just, you know, when she was like, you know, if you want to do something, just go do it. And I think it's important to challenge yourself and do things that make you afraid. And, you know, because you feel alive when you have that, when, you know what I mean? Otherwise we're kind of, we're deadening ourselves every year. It's like we're safer and mm -hmm. safer and safer yeah. and, into a little box. Well, a little exactly. Box. We live in a little and box I, I think with like a glass a lot ceiling of, that yeah. we put ourselves in. Who am I going to do it with? So now I haven't done this thing that I've always wanted to do. And then as you age, you know, at a, at a certain point, you're not able to go to base camp because you're just too fucking yeah. old, right? Yeah. Um, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and so I've kind of come to a different re realization that even if I can't find the person to go with me, I'll find a group that's going and go and do the things I want to go. It was so good. And that, and that is part of wellness, right? Yeah. Also, I mean, we had what when Galadriel came on, it was a different, you know, different focus of wellness. Well, I now can't see you, but I trust that you're there. <laughs> Certainly she was talking about, um, you know, kind of what you eat, um, yeah. exercise, uh, making sure you lift heavy weight. <laughs> lift heavy weights. So what may be heavy to me would be different than this person and different than this person. Right now for myself, 15 pounds is heavy. So oh, and she you know. is a beast. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. She is so funny. And I really enjoyed uh, talking to her and her telling us the things, you know, make sure you're, you know, the, the things that she kind of considers those five points to get yes. yeah. for people to kind of age to their kind of optimal health. Yeah. Um, you know, I found that was a really good conversation because some of the stuff uh, I had never really thought about, like the, you can't eat your way out of menopause. Uh -huh. Well, first of all, what we have to know is that our hormones are 100% driving the bus, running the show. And what we could do is our best to support that and do a couple of little hacks to make this time in our lives easier. So when we look in the mirror, we actually still recognize ourselves instead of going, what the fuck is happening so my <laughs> right and by the way oprah has got her magazine yes. out right now 
in I the current right on issue. The, on the cover or right inside, it says something about you can't eat your way out yes. of this. Right? Yeah. It's it's all in menopause. Yes. Yeah. And how great that everybody is talking about this. Everybody's right? talking about it yeah. right now and about how to how to deal with like, you know, because that's one of the things that happens. You know, your 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 body just you start gaining weight and your metabolism slows down. And so how can you change your diet, yeah. change your exercise routine, change certain things within you so that you can work uh for the body you have now? And sort of pulling off of that, I think. For me, I really want to, moving forward, find somebody who can talk to us about HRT, hormone replacement therapy. Right. Because, you know, full disclosure, I just started and I am waiting to feel the difference because, it's right. you know, I'm days in. But, you know, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I do think that it is worth investigating if you're really, really getting challenged. And for me, it's the hot flashes. Yeah. It's really distracting. I can be trying to work. I can be trying to, you know, parent. I can be trying to, to be my friends. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it becomes so distracting. And I, I just went to my doctor. I said, I can't do this any longer. I'm up in the middle of the night. Um, and so I'm really crossing my fingers that this might be, yeah. but it'd be good to get somebody on talking about Yeah, that, absolutely. that's a big part of this journey, right? And I really think yeah. that's, that's, that you said it so well. It's not for everybody, but to be able to have access to it, uh, you know, certainly if you need it, because, yep. you know, people are only just starting to look into menopause and all these things, like yeah. something that wasn't even studied. Right. right. Nobody right. looked into it. So it's great that we now have all these things that we can can access to try to um, <laughs> help us on this journey, because why are we suffering? Speaking of things we can access, Tara Laurie. What do we need to know? What do we need to know right now? What do we need to know right now? Well, hey there, it's my, okay. Cards everywhere. This card is some bullshit. It is reminding you to tell your inner critic to zip it. We've all gotten into Love the segue. Look at all of our segues. Love Sarah Lori. Love I do too. I kind of love, love a little woo-woo, you know, without the cuckoo. And I think for me, when she did our readings, well, first of all, I'm oh, talking all again. Of our readings. Look, there's the hot flash right now. Can we see that happening? <laughs> I was embarrassed. Everyone, everyone wants to know about career. They want to know about romance. They want to know about health. They want to know about maybe moving, but they really just want to know that it's going to be okay. They want to be told it's going to be okay. And I always say, that's not how tarot works. Tarot's like homework, homework, homework. Right? It's not looking into my future. It's right. not that crystal ball. You have to take this information and you have to run with it. So if you don't use it, you know, that's what you do. If you use it, then that's what you do. But it's not just going to happen without an action yeah. from you. Yeah. But this has just given you some kind of little peek behind the curtain. Um, this is the possible right path and you can work. And you've got to do the work. It's like, yeah. yeah. Right. You got to yeah. do the work. So I'm putting in the work on our okay. skin, which is what Melanie said. Oh, Remember, we Melanie. talked to Melanie yes. about our skin. And as I was coming here this morning, it was super sunny and I forgot to put on my sunblock. So I was like, is our skin going to end up looking like crepe paper? Are we ever going to have any elasticity? Is it just going to be, you know, we're going to be drawn and look like crypt keeper or something like that? How do I keep it plump and moist? Melanie had a lot to say about our skin, our um, microbiome. Oh, yes. It became my favorite word for a time. That's and, another topic. And microbiomes are everywhere. And I also liked how she was selling, again, on your wrinkles. You know, yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, she was, she was good about that. And I think it must have been really interesting for you because you also have a skincare company, right? So, yeah, you I guys, mean, you, you guys speak the speak. I'm just like, you know, bring on the oils <laughs> during the periods of pre perimenopausal. So, probably within your late 30s and 40s, um, you know, stick to these um, well developed actives nowadays, which is vitamin C niacinamide, retinols. But that idea of owning your wrinkles, that, that you have value, the wisdom that you hold because you've done these experiences, mm -hmm. you know, and I loved that quote that she said about the wrinkles because I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I got these wrinkles, so screw you because I did it. Right, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For women, it doesn't matter what age you are right now, you need to just drop the rocks. Drop all the rocks that you're carrying that are burdening, burdening you down and holding you back. Drop them. Feel beautiful. And feel beautiful 
for the knowledge that you have. And you know what? You're a spectacular specimen because you're a woman. Uh, all right. So last but not, certainly not least, um, and we, we did this one very recently, midlife malaise. The majority of clients that I have right now um, are individuals like ourselves where they suddenly, and it's not just women, it's also men, where they suddenly kind of question, it's like an existential crisis. It's like an existential crisis in mass, right? It's who am I? What am I? I was working so hard for what exactly? You know, once she you get into, age. once you get into middle age, right? You know, there's, you have all these responsibilities. You've got all this stuff in the plate, And it's super important to figure out ways to take care of yourself right. because if we're not taking care of ourselves, how are we supposed to take care of our children who are often living back at home? You know, our aging parents, our partners, our friends, you know, our work, whatever it is, if you are not taking care of what is inside of you and your mental health yeah. and your anxiety and whatever is going on, you know, and that's, and I think she was really great sort of addressing that, normalizing it. For me, the normalization is key. I, I'm trying to stay there, but it's still at the same time, even though I know there's the realistic benchmarks, it's, you know, the disappointment because there's all this stuff coming at you. The disappointment's real. So at what point do we not necessarily use our bodies or our looks to send the message? Right. Where did those expectations come from? And now why are they bringing me down? Because th that wasn't yep. necessarily the expectations I had when I was younger. When I was younger, I had a vision of where I wanted my life to go. That's not where it went. But then my expectations of what I should have are completely different from the things that, and even when I really think about where do I want to be or what do I want to be doing, they're not those things. So a lot of those things are societal. You have the privilege of aging. There's a privilege to aging. Yeah. And this is part of it. If it were in the 1900s, a lot of us would be dead. Yes. But we're not. <laughs> right? So I'm like, then how do you, no, how do you capitalize? I have vaginas <laughs> instead. Um, yes, we do. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think, so that's a good recap. I actually think that the topics that you chose yeah. and I chose are very reflective. <laughs> Mine, I mean, like you. end of life planning, you know, tarot, like I'm really searching for something else. Um, soul crew because i'm trying to figure out how to make friends maybe don't in midlife malaise and and lot has got sex fashion <laughs> skin you know making her body hot sex and skin you know, and wellness um so that just sort of says it all yeah <laughs> oh my goodness okay. um anyways so we'll yeah continue. hope you guys are enjoying everything that we're doing so far which yeah. we're bringing to you and please you know always send us a message send us a dm let us know any topics that you want yeah. to talk about, anything that we haven't brought up, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you like. We want to continue the conversation. So we just hope you guys will join. So next time I'll come to New York and see you. Yeah, so next time we'll do an episode okay. together from New York. But yeah. um, so I hope you guys are still listening and we have some great, great episodes coming up. You're really going to want to tune into. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next okay. time on where we're at. <laughs>